Hey guys, thank you so much for taking your time out to watch this video in particular. But let me give you an update on a channel called Sport City. Yes, Sport City. It is a channel dedicated to everything related to Jamaican sports. Football, cricket, athletics, netball, rugby league, rugby union, tennis, lacrosse, swimming, you name it, we got it on Sport City. And what is the channel designed to do? It is designed to highlight Jamaican talents across all of those sporting disciplines. If you're a Jamaican and you're playing that sport, then we got you covered on Sport City. So it's quite simple, guys. Hit the subscribe button to Sport City right now. Hi, everybody. I'm Darren Moore, and you're watching Reggae Boys Country. This video is brought to you by MPEC Printery. Specializing in t-shirt printing, posters, and shipping from the USA. Call 876-775-6692 or 876-337-7374. Andy Gone Nuts. 100% guaranteed fresh coconut water delivered straight to your door. Call 876-309-6128. That's 876-309-6128. Refreshing and affordable. For more information, follow them on Instagram at Andy Gone Nuts. Mm, truly refreshing. And Crumble by Mrs. C. Old English fudge and other delectable sweet treats. Call or WhatsApp 876-586-0471. That's 876-586-0471. This video is also brought to you by BLC Jamaica Security Electronics. Specializing in alarm system, video surveillance, camera system or CCTV, barrier system, gate automation and access control. Call 876 320-7711. That's 876-320-7711. Or 876-351-1105. That's 876-351-1105. Hello, everybody. How is everybody doing? My name is Simon Preston, and welcome to Reggae Boys Commentary. Yep, this is the channel where we come together to discuss everything in relation to Jamaican football. You know what that sound is? That's the sound of the broom. You might say, why was that necessary, Simon? It means the time is coming. That's right. The time is coming. Where we talk about what lies ahead. And it's a very, very compelling matter that we will be discussing in relation to this. So what is it that we're going to do right now? Well, we're going to quite simply have a look at the under 17 squad. That's right. We're going to have a look at the under 17 squad, have a, <clears throat> have a conversation about it. And of course, after that, what we're going to do is basically, in a sense, and in many ways, focus on what lies ahead, the youth teams and everything of that nature. So we're going to do that and we're going to get right into the grand scheme of things with this. All right. So you guys are saying the truth and more says, big up, Simon, big up. How are you? How are you guys doing? I do hope that you guys are doing well. How are things? What's new? <clears throat> yep, do tell us. And let's see what you guys have to say, right? So, without further ado, here we go, folks. As you can going to see on your screen momentarily, the delegation that will travel to Guatemala for the CONCACAF Under-17 Championship. <clears throat> so, Marin Gordon, the head coach, 
Vassal Reynolds, the assistant coach. Andrew Peart also joining as the assistant coach. Andrew Sewell, goalkeeper coach. Ronald Watson, the kit man. Wendell Downswell, the technical director. Lamar Morgan, physical trainer. Dr. Edmund Regis, that's the team doctor. <clears throat> Ramon Thomas, team manager. Alvin Green, massage therapist. Tajay Bailey, physiotherapist. Brian Watson, the head of delegation. Now we get into the squad itself. But guys, any questions you have? How many overseas-based players? It's seven, based on my calculations. We're going to go through it again. Claudia Fretcher says... The top of the evening to you, Simon. Hi, Claudia. How are you? I hope you are doing well. How are things? Hope that you're okay. And you and the family are doing okay as well. Okay. To Wayne Lynch, Mount Pleasant FC, Eva Academy for FA, Joshua Grant, Inter Miami, Ahir Dixon, Mount Pleasant, Alex Xavier Gooden, Cavalier, Malik Robinson, unattached, Nashan Bolt, unattached, Ronaldo Barrett, Cavalier, Adrian Reed, Cavalier. That's right. That's the same Adrian Reed, folks, that we've spoken about time and time again. Remember the name, Adrian Reed. That's the son of former reggae boy Adrian Reed. So this is Adrian Reed Jr. Yeah. That's right. Adrian Reed Jr. He's 16, and he's going to be 17 later this calendar year. That's right. So that's something for us to, to be bearing with. So that's something for us to bear in mind. Malachi Molina, FC Dallas. Brandon Bent, Inter Miami. Jason White, unattached. Jordan Mantango, yeah, South Florida. Everald Swaby, unattached. Jamari Bell, Phoenix FA. Dunstan Cohen, Fair United. Orane Watson, Harborview. Nicholas Simmons, Richmond United Academy. Adrian Mahoney, Toronto FC Academy. Ashton Gordon, Atlanta United Academy. And Dylan John Phoenix. There has been four reserves that have been named to the list. And as it relates to these four reserve players, these are that will continue to train with the team as changes can be made in case of injury as late as match day minus one. So any injuries to the squad, these are the four players that can be called upon to, as, as changes could be made to the team, right? So that's something for us to bear in mind. Okay, good. So, Odin Wilberforce, Mount Pleasant Academy. Samir, Bloss, FC Prime, Ryan Heron, Orlando City, and Che Daniel Gardner. Those are the four reserve players. As you guys know, I had the opportunity to speak with Ricardo Bibi Gardner two, three months ago in Manchester, and he spoke briefly about his son, didn't want to give a lot of details, and that's fine. And it's quite natural that, you know, you want to keep him under the radar with expectations. And that is absolutely fair. And I think that certainly should be respected. For now, what I can say is that Chad Daniel Gardner has talent. And we should keep close eye on him moving forward. So I'll leave it there. But certainly a player with, with talent. Good talent. So we can look forward to him in particular. We're going to go over the 20 man squad quite shortly. Tyrone Williams says, Bless up, Simon. Bless up. How are you? What about Kobe from under 20? Let's do that again. All right, that's 20 German squad. Derek is. Uh... Good point, Rob Smith. Good point. Probably being upset. I'm not respect the game is televised. 
the CONCACAF Championship itself, CONCACAF's YouTube channel is planning to stream the games. This is one of the kids from the desk. Well, let's upload progress. We go all good. For those of you that are trying to keep track of things in particular, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five, six, Seven, if you include the eight, if you include the two players that are basically on the reserve list. Daniel Gardner at the moment on a chat, but I expect him to be at a club in the future soon. Same can be said about Ricardo Fuller's son, who is also making strides in his environment. So we look forward to that and we look forward to what lies ahead in his situation. So something for us to build towards, something for us to look towards as well in this squad <laughs> in particular. So what's the latest for you guys? All right, so as you guys know, we had an interview with Cuba Mitchell. So he's at Sunderland right now. He joined them from Birmingham City in the summer. Manchester United, Midlands and Northeast Scouts are eyeing Jamaican youth prospect Cuba Mitchell for the Manchester United Academy next season. So far, they're impressed by what they see of him at Sunderland. I'm going to reiterate the point, guys, that just because somebody's impressed does not mean that it's going to be eventually a contract that will be signed. But I think it's important to be aware that the interest is there. So... So let that sink. Let that sink in, folks. All right. Good. So let's bear that in mind. Something that can work out well. So let's bear that in mind. Okay. Good. And hopefully by tomorrow, I'll have some updates as it relates to right back options for Jamaica and some updated paperwork of some people from a Chelsea perspective. So I'll provide you those updates with the days and weeks that lie ahead. So it's something that you can look forward to, we can look forward to generally. So guys, this is a video in relation to and the 17 squad, what lies ahead. And if you guys haven't already, smash the like button. And after you smash the like button, hit the subscribe button. All right, guys, quite simple. Smash the like button. And after you smash the like button, hit the subscribe button. Simple as that, guys. All right, cool. Anybody that wants to hop on for a few minutes to give their insight as well, the link is in the chat. All right, so you're more than welcome to hop on for a few So you guys can press the link and you guys can hop on for a few minutes if you would like. And then what you can do is basically from there, hop on the link and then we can join the chat. All right, good. So Mr. Webster, if you have a few minutes and you want to talk or ask some questions, then you are more than welcome to do that all right so that's something that we can do good good stuff so let's bear that in mind okay so one more time for the the squad for you guys Tawain Lynch Joshua Grant I hear Dixon Xavier Gooden Malik Robinson Ashton Bolt Ronaldo Barrett, Adrian Reed, Malachi Molina, Brandon Bent, Jason White, Jordan Montangle, Everell Swaby, Dunstan Cohen, Lorraine Watson, Nicola Simmons, Adrian Mahoney, Ashton Gordon, Dylan John, 
Dean Wilberforce, Samir Bloss, Brian Huron, Shad Daniel Gardner. So that's the latest folks. Let's see and hear what you guys will have to say. I look forward to that information. And I know that the information is well appreciated from your end. And I know that you look forward to what lies ahead as well. So big important topic of conversation. And it's certainly one that we should not brush aside by any means. So if you guys want to hop on, the link is right there for a few minutes. You can do that and we have a chat. All right. How does that sound? Well, let us know. Let us know how you feel about that. And you guys can pop in for a few minutes. All right. Good. So that's something that we should look at. Which I was that Yeah. Come on, guys, smash the like button. And after you smash the like button, you hit the subscribe button as well. Simple as that, guys. Smash the like button and smash the subscribe button. Come on, guys. We are this close, this close to 16,000 subscribers. So smash the like button right now because we're this close to 16K. Smash the like button right now. Simon, what's your expectations from this squad? And is the coaching staff the right fit for this selection? That's a good question, Warren Webster. Okay, my expectation from the squad. Quarterfinals is my expectation. And as we know, in relation to a quarterfinal, anything can happen in knockout football. You can have a penalty shootout. A Canadian man kick the ball over the bar. And just like that, Jamaica qualifies for Peru for the Under-17 World Cup. I think quarterfinals is realistic. Is a realistic game, and as you know, anything can happen there after that. So my expectation is for the team not only to advance from the group, but also to get to the quarterfinals. So my preference would be for Jamaica to top the group, but I don't want Jamaica to finish second in the group. Finish second in the group, we know that means a tie against Guatemala, the host nation in the round of 16, and of course, the United States in the quarterfinals. So for me, that's a path to be avoided. Finishing third in the group is not bad. Panama in the round of 16 and Honduras in the in the last eight. So for me, that's what I would say where that is concerned. Any other further question, Warren Webster, let me know. What what ahead what ahead another failure under 17 Jamaica coach should not have the job as a head coach? A partial to the local based players and never aggressively go to find players out of yard. It says XYZ bartender Thompson. Martin Baker says, I'm not on this hope thing. This team could and should have been better. I'll agree with you. I'm quite disappointed. Bro, give the first game why it looks so far ahead. Give the first game. You want me to talk about the Cuba game? That is what you're saying? But yeah, to answer your question, X Y Z, I'm a bit, dis I'm disappointed. No Cameron Eubank. I'm also disappointed. No Cameron Eubank and no Zach Lovelace. For me, if those two players were in the squad, I would definitely say to you, look, pack your tickets, pa pack your bags, book your flight. We're going to Peru. I would definitely tell you if we had those two players in the squad. I'm definitely saying right now we're going to the World Cup. If if Zach Lovelace and Cameron Eubank were on the squad. My confidence would be up here, up here. But I'm not sure if you guys heard the press conference from Maren Gordon. Maren Gordon was making the point that these kids are minors. So basically what he's saying is that, listen, there's little that the JFF can do. So the priority is with the parents and or guardian of the child to ensure that they help their child with the documentation needed for them to get a Jamaican passport. Same old thing, I'm so tired as a fan. Okay. After Jeff Simon may lose off of you because you are support foolishness with the Jeff of Madness. What madness are you referring to? Are you referring to the, the absence of Cameron Eubank and Zach Lovelace? Because remember, that, sir, was out of our hands. Out of our hands. That was out of our hands. 
that was at my hand and out of your hand, even though, you know, I did the interview with Cameron Eubank back in October, you know? Like the JFF can do a lot. I never said the JFF can do anything. I said that when you're dealing with minors, you can't just say, hey, Zach Lovelace, you need a Jamaican passport. You can't do that. He just turned 17. He was 60 when it happened, so he was a minor at the time. So the first thing first that... Marin Gordon can't talk directly to Zach Lovelace and say, yo, Zach, get the Jamaican passport. Boom. Little more of a general. He can't do that. It's Zach Lovelace's father slash agent that Marin Gordon would have to speak to. Same with Cuba Mitchell. Same with Cameron Eubank. He did not speak to Cameron Eubank directly. It was Cameron Eubank's father. Cuba Mitchell, there was a WhatsApp conversation after getting permission from Cuba Mitchell's father. Nitro says the Kyoto system still alive and well. Same number of overseas players in the twenties. Seems a set policy, says Nitro. There is no local coaches in Jamaica themselves. Oh, the under seventeen program and the under twenty then our World Cup campaign. Dr. Joyful, I've made it extremely clear, and I even done a video on this channel that Jamaica can win an under seventeen World Cup. And you guys would have seen the names that I included in that squad. So, of course, I would have wanted to have more overseas-based players. I would have wanted to have 14 to 15 UK-based players in the squad. That is what I wanted. That is what Simon Preston wanted. Did it happen? No. Will it ever happen? Not for the foreseeable future. Not for the foreseeable future. Simon, when I see the coaches go out aggressively and score for players, for now, I do not rate them. When you mean them, you're talking about the coaching staff in particular. Joseph Brown says, that press conference was trash. Yes, Martin, the JF can help more. If they had started preparations like a year ago, all the paperwork issues would have. That I will agree with you 100%, Joseph, because the team came into camp late November, December, thereabouts. While Canada, USA, Mexico, Costa Rica were all together for over a year. Cuba was playing friendlies before Jamaica. Guadeloupe was doing the same as well. Yeah. I sent video footage of, of Cuba, Guadeloupe, and Costa Rica to Marin Gordon. He said he appreciated me doing the due diligence and research of the video analysis to break down Cuba, <coughs> Guadeloupe, and Costa Rica. So he has the video footage to prepare for them. And yesterday he received some video footage on Trinidad and Tobago. So he will know the strengths and weaknesses of the opposition. Simon, even with 20 overseas players, 99% of the coach is bad. Bad? Mm, I mean, when you say coaches, you know, I'm thinking this entire support staff. So when you include physical trainer and technical director and, and, and those things, and I wouldn't agree with you in that angle. Not at all. Do I think that reinforcement should have been made? Absolutely. Preparation should have started well early. Well, 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 well earlier. You know, for me personally, we should have started under 17 preparation from March 2022, one year in advance. I have watched Panama youth players before and there will be no pushover. Can we expect to see an organized defensive play or a more ball possession type of play? Warren Webster, to be honest with you, a more organized defensive play, more organized, a team that is going to be tight centrally, clog the middle, clog the middle tight, 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 tight. So that is what we can expect. Big up Simon and Lewis, they, they could have start score play a long time. It's only full wait until last minute then make a bag of foolishness like there's chicken without head or JFF administration. Dr. Joyful, preparation, preparation, preparation. Should have been done earlier, should have been done earlier, should have been done earlier. So I agree with you wholeheartedly. You are preaching to the choir on this matter, sir. Because it's no, su no surprise, as I've said before, it is absolutely no surprise that the Jamaican teams that qualified for the Under-17 World Cup in 1999 and 2011 had ample preparation time together. 
It's like Coach Gordon didn't learn from Fuzzy or Tapa or the under-20 male, female, or the under-17 females all failed due to preparation. You know, Joseph, the under-17 women that went to the quarterfinal, they had decent preparation. But apart from that, everybody else, yeah, the preparation wasn't... Preparation was substandard, you could say. But the under-17 regular girls that went to the quarterfinals last year, it was decent preparation. And, and it's unfortunate because they book up the United States in the in the last eight, had they topped their group, which had Canada, well, they drew with Canada, but had they topped the group, it could have been an under-17 World Cup. Isn't it? Head coaches are bad. Three teams now started the game, started the same, no preparation, or they do so. I'll draw for someone like, <laughs> how can one keep doing the same thing over and over? Disappointing, disappointing. Simon, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Paul, what you're saying is correct, my friend. I did not disagree with that statement at all. You are absolutely right, okay? Decent, that's not good. So you're saying decent is not good. So if somebody gets 75% on a, on a test, 75%, that's decent. So you're not saying that's... So, so in your book, Good would be 80% on a test, and 75% would be decent. I heard we are poor offensively. Thoughts? Offensively? There is very little possession. And the team, when they do have the ball and transition, they get numbers forward. So that is what I appreciate about it. What I think needs that sort of improvement ahead of the championship, which will, which I'm sure the Trinidad and Tobago games will do and provide, is ensure that they work on counterattacks a bit more. And taking shots because sometimes the, the ball is in positions where they're not taking it. It's the finishing problem. We didn't score against Severe, Harbor View, Portmore. Many games. Many, many games where that wasn't goal scored from the Jamaican team. You are playing a sport, not a test. Of course you are. I'm just putting an analogy on the table. That's all I'm saying. And the under-17 regular girls had a decent preparation. They traveled. They had, a, they had multiple camps together in North America. And it was, if they had booked any other team in the competition outside of the United States, I hold my view that they would have qualified for the under-17 FIFA World Cup. So someone from most in the chat, the fans' expectations are apprehensive. Nigel, let, just let the Jamaicans at home and abroad be aware of the quota system. Look, guys, I've had this conversation on this platform many times, many, many, many times. And I know you guys have heard already. Howard McIntosh, when he was the technical director of the Jamaica Football Federation in 2012, said at the under-17 level, the vast majority of the players in the squad will be domestically based. However, under 20 moving forward, that is when you would start to see that change. But at the under 17 level, the vast majority of the players in the squad will be domestically based. And we have seen that for some time, even in the cycles where Jamaica have qualified. I can see the excuses planned if they fail. I bet Gordon will blame players for paperwork are waiting on England or US call-up or lack of preparation when he was in charge of getting his team ready. Only a fool keep on make a mistake over the needs younger minds. But all I can see, the guys don't care what you say, is just to spend cheap and hustle off the program. <sighs> Martin Vegas says, that's a lie too, don't believe that. What are you referring to? That that is a shield for me, Simon. What shield are you talking about? We have seen it in evidence. 
vast majority, well, majority of Jamaica's under-17 teams, it has been that situation where the bulk of the squad has been domestically based. Even in 2011 with the Omar Holness and Jason Wright and Alvis Powell and, and, and Zelana Barnes and Troy Mopen, Mario Williams, Romario Jones, or Shane Jenkins, the only overseas players part of that squad, you could say, was when you had the King Kaya Beckford, Javier Roberts, Giovanni Brown, Quante Abotil Smith, Sean Claude Lawson. So we're talking six, seven players right there. So yeah. The evidence is there. The evidence is there. Certainly. The evidence is there. Simon, Coach Gordon is one of the most qualified coaches on the rock. Is there other coaches' choices that is at his level? Look, Warren. You certainly can. Absolutely. Go ahead, Mr. Campbell. No problem at all. Absolutely. No problem at all. All right, Mr. Webster, I'm going to answer your question. All right? Let me answer that question right now. My choice, my choice would have been Gary Gordon. That would be my choice because he's worked at Borussia Dortmund. This is the father of, of, of Daniel Gordon. He's worked at Borussia Dortmund at the under-17 level, under-15, under-13 level, and under-10 level. So he's in charge of the transition of those players into the, the Dortmund under-20, under-23s, and eventually the first team. So Gary Gordon was my first choice for the position. My first choice. And Gary Gordon, for me, should be part of the program. Stop making up the reason you can move away from 2012. New time, new way of the game play. I'm telling you what Howard McIntosh said, X, Y, Z. So the JFF should state it when the squad is being selected to prevent. State what in particular? That 35% of the squad will be overseas based and 65% will be domestic based. Is that what you're saying? What you're referring to. Simon, a question. Do you think, honestly, that using amateur players? No. Okay, we have a call at this evening. Mr. Campbell, good evening, sir. Welcome to the show. Hey, man. Yes, I'm Sir Simon. How are you doing? Yes, so, um, hope you're doing well. Yeah. Say that again? Hope you're doing well. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Doing well, thanks. You know, hope you are doing all right as well. Most things are the country. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, our U17 team have been selected, and um, of course, we are wishing the team all the best in the tournaments yeah. that they perform well. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Gordon's um, system that he's trying to develop, mm -hmm. I hope it pays off that d defensive mindset. Yeah. But um, when you're going to a tournament with our structure to defend, you must also be cognizant that you may end up in, um, in shootouts. So I'm hoping that they're preparing the boys if they must go and um, do spoiler shootouts. Right. Yeah. Because um, mm -hmm. remember the, the team recently that played against Inter Miami, the, the Jamaican select team. Yeah. And their performance are not there off, yeah, regarding on the spoiler shootouts. Yeah. So because if you have to play a strong defense, mm -hmm. you can get a, a goal here and there and, uh, and beat, beat everyone, yeah? Yeah. So I am I am I am positive regarding this team and hopeful that they can qualify. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because traditionally youth, youth teams are strong going forward and weak in defense. Mm -hmm. The Jamaican back line is difficult to break break down Correct. in the tournament. They are difficult to beat. Agreed. And we have to play like Ashton Garden leading the line, hopefully. They can score a goal here or there and, and, and um, probably win the tournament. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. 
I said it's coming early on, early on somebody's um, program, mm-hmm. and I thought I was joking. I'm, I'm, I'm probably being sarcastic, but serious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Defense is defense is doing comments. Correct. And they, they are they are playing against against adults in in the JPL teams, right? Guys are bigger, stronger, faster, and they are holding their own. So against their peers. I'd assume that it will be even better. Yeah? Right. And they have the same defensive shape and structure and can, you know, get, get, get into the final third and score one or two goals and not concede. Then it will maybe be the US. It's possible. Yeah. Because we have to take a of that these are 15 and 16 year olds playing for the US as well and for Mexico. Yes. True. Yeah? And our, and our team, essentially, if you look at our team, we have several academy players, both um, local and overseas academy. And we have a few players that are playing in um, the JPL. Mm-hmm. And um, it's playing for, I think, four or five players from the Manning Cup, the Costa Cup program. So at least 15 other players, they are both, are in academies are playing in our semi professional league. So Simon, I'm hopeful. I'm I am hopeful that team will 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 perform well in the tournament. All right. Then. And I don't think that we should try to avoid the US. Interesting. <laughs> no for what? For what? These are fifteen or sixty sixteen year olds. Why are you trying to avoid them? If we are not sure it defense our jam and, and they can't break our back line. <laughs> and we wish there once, we win, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Because to win the tournament, we must play and beat them, and Mexico as well. So that's just my t- um, two cents, Simon. Go up. All right, Ian. Much appreciated. Cool. Cool, man. Yeah, man. That's Ian Campbell, folks. So let me address some of some things in the comments, and then we. <clears throat> forward from there all right joseph fully fully see what you're you're getting there warren to be honest simon i think the under 17 although it was a high percentage of local based players i think i really think it would be hard to get overseas based jamaicans and camps don't like it though well for me personally zach lovelace doesn't need to be part of a camp Cameron Eubank, for me, doesn't have to be part of camp. If Cuba Mitchell was eligible, for me, he wouldn't be part of camp. He would just join the team in Guatemala because those are players that are rubbing on the shoulders of the first team. Zach is already in the first team. Cameron Eubank has trained with the first team, and Cuba Mitchell has trained with the first team as well. So for me, if you are already in a situation and an environment where you're training with the first team or you're in the under-21s doing great things, for me... I feel it's okay. I feel it's okay for you to just travel to Guatemala. So I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say yeah, any trials and then things. So, so. Dr. Drifel, please expand on what Mr. Campbell said that you didn't agree with. The JPL players worse than the under 17 youth team, says Dr. Joyful. But this bro the will break our back line. That's why we need goals going forward. Yep, we do. And the reality is that we have been short for goals right now. But the games against Trinidad and Tobago will be a good measuring stick. The games against Trinidad will tell us exactly where Jamaica are right now. Where Jamaica right now? How do they stand? What needs to happen? Trinidad and Tobago arrives on the island on the 3rd. That's Friday. That's right. They arrive on the island on Friday. Mm-hmm. So they arrive on the island on Friday, and bearing that in mind, when they arrive on the island on Friday, they play the very next day. So they arrive in Kingston and have to drive way down to St. Elizabeth. I don't even know if they're staying in a hotel in St. Elizabeth because the game is going to be at Stets, you know. Will the game against TNT be televised or stream? Not that I'm aware of, my friend. Not that I'm aware of. So to answer your question, no. 
Simon, we need a balanced team, not one tips. Not one tips. Martin Baker, big up on the 17. Simon, can you run for JFF president because you have more sense than them who run in the program, says Dr. Joyful. Dr. Joyful, thank you very much for your encouragement. I really, really appreciate it. So the Constitution states that you have to be 35 years old. I'm 30 is knocking on my door, so everything in time. I'm not 30 as yet, but I believe in life that nothing happens before it's time, so everything in time. Sean, 3679, says, big up, Simon. Big up. How are you? Hope you're doing well. How are things? Hope you and the family are doing well. What's up, Sean? How's Suriname, Curaçao, <clears throat> and everything? going in that manner. Just let me know. So, just let me know. XYZ says, and if they do not get it right, what next? Meaning if Jamaica does not qualify for the under 17 World Cup, then two years time, we'll either have Maren Gordon as the head coach of the under 17 team in 2025, or it'll be a new coach. That's what's gonna happen. Prince Bay, doing well, Simon. Right, for it's a false mindset to me. One rep star national team can be better. Of course it can. Wait till you hear who is working on a Jamaican passport. <laughs> well, that is for another video. That is for another video. But just bear in mind that talent will never, ever, 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 ever be an issue for Jamaica. Talent is something that should never, ever, ever be a problem for us. Yeah, I have family in Jamaica, but I also have family in the States as well, but they're doing well, you know. Both family in the States and Jamaica and England, yeah, they're doing okay. I'm talking about the game weekend. Oh, okay. If they don't get it right, then you know what happens. Then that, that's a measuring stick because Trinidad has a lot of similarities to Jamaica and they'll bring a different dimension in, in the sense of a team that has been in camp for a little bit longer than the Jamaican team. Simon, can you imagine you having your own database and running the program? You would know exactly which place to reach out to. Yeah. Absolutely. Simon dropped the boom now. What do you mean I dropped the boom now? I don't understand. Oh. <laughs> there, man. There. They will be out there, but they will coach. Simon, I tried to hear about the passport. Tell me when we get them. Mm -hmm. Know yourself, my G. Everything is time, you know. Everything in life just takes time. Just got to give it time. Just got to give it time, 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 time. Time is the master. Time is the master. So let's bear that in mind, okay? And let's not forget. All right, cool. So, so that's something that we can process. All right, folks? Good. It's important, you know? Something we can't brush aside at all. So yeah, folks, not a lot of preparation. Not our not our best team selected, but look, I'm a Jamaican and so are you guys. Why do we have this culture of just talking about the problem, the problem, the problem? Why can't we talk solutions? Why can't we talk solutions? 
okay, the best team was not selected for this championship, right? There's limited time to prepare. What can be done to ensure that by the time Jamaica goes to Guatemala, ready for Cuba, ready for Guadeloupe, ready for Costa Rica, ready for Puerto Rico, and ready for Canada, for bust them up and qualify for Peru? What can be done? All right, I'm going to tell you guys right now. Yes, I know there's not a bag of footage right now on the internet in relation to these players. I know that, and I understand that. But listen, guys, I have passed information to Coach Gordon. He is appreciated. So now it's about using the information in the right manner. So if I say to you, that 75% of Cuba's goals come in the first quarter of an hour of a game. What should that tell you? Quarter of an hour, that's 15 minutes. So if majority of Cuba's goals come in the first 15 minutes, what does that tell you? That means that Cuba starts the game well. So how do you prepare for that? Well, Cuba is a team that will, in the first 15 minutes, run down every ball and chase everything and try their best to get <clears throat> a 1-0 lead. They'll try to do that within the first 15 minutes. So with that information that you have about a team that more than likely goes 1-0 up before any team that they play, you know that the last 75 minutes you have a grand chance to capitalize because they will tire. They will lose energy. They will lose strength. They will get tired. You will beat them. And the same information can be used for other opponents as well. Guadeloupe concedes late goals. Cuba scores early goals. Costa Rica, at the start of second halves, are a little bit vulnerable. The Puerto Ricans have a few injuries that they're battling. And Canada are the same as well. I've just given you Jamaica's five potential opponents. So it's about using the information wisely. Wisely. So I hope that answers your questions, guys. Okay. That's it. Players looking about passport. Ivan Tony? No, not at all. JFF um, needs someone to find the players and let uh, Jamaica post you from that. That's XYZ by Lord Simon. Do they listen to solution? Absolutely. Will you be at the game, Simon? Carry your broadcast team and commentate live. <laughs> Coach Marin Gordon <coughs> doesn't want the games Jamaican games to be shown on YouTube because he doesn't want Jamaica to be scouted by the opposition so precious is Warren Webster after Dreyfus assignment the solution is to get rid of Rudolf Speed and imprint them out of the JFF Trent Boring to Simon on ESPN Deportes the Liga Emma Equis Commissioner spill the beans that we're having a Confederation Cup type tournament in 2025 in USA FIFA wants <coughs> marquee tournaments in the USA 2024, 2025, 2026. That is interesting news, my friend. I will do the research and keep you posted. They do not listen to solution. Solution is what we need now. Simon, most Jamaican team lets in early goals too. Yeah, that's something we'll have to prepare for as well, especially in this game. Jaden says, what happened to Che Daniel Gardner? He's in the reserve list, so if there's any injuries, then he could be coming in the squad. And even the day before the first game, if there's injuries, players from the reserves list can travel out to Guatemala. USA always plays it wide and always looks to cross it at every opportunity. If you force them to create through the middle, they break down and crumble. That's how Canada defeated them. Well said. Simon, Marin Gordon, not much better than Tapa. Some mentality, same mind. So that you don't know how to transfer information to the youth and your information is wasted. <coughs> wasted waste of time. Well I hope he uses the information well. And certainly you saw his response at the press conference today. So I've I've made my feelings extremely clear, Dr. Joyful. For me, Gary Gordon is who long term I would like in the under-17 program, Joby Makanov, part of the senior team coaching staff, and part of the under-20s, 
Frank Sinclair and Zavon Hines. So, because Zavon Hines right now is the under 15, under 14 coach at West Ham United. Starboy says, I'm Jamaican. I want the best for all Jamaica this time. I know these players were not assembled properly. And I'm not going to ever give up on my team and country. <clears throat> well said. Why is there an age clause in the GFF running? Good question. I don't know the answer to that question. So don't you think better teams will send scouts to watch their opponents' games? Yes. Yes, they will. Simon, what formation and starting 11 would, would best exploit the blistering pace that the Rega boys possess? That's a good question, Trent Boring. Yeah, Blake, you would have Dexter at left back, Ethan Pinnock and Damon Lowe, centre half. Right back, you have Ethan Laird. Central defensive midfielder John Russell in front of them. You have Rebel Morrison and <coughs> Daniel Johnson up top. You have Omari Hutchinson on the left, Leon Bailey on the right. And through the hole, it's Shamar Bowser Nicholson. I'd love to see that at 11. I'd love to see that at 11. And if, if ever that ball I get in Jamaican passport next week, Jesus Christ. Trouble! It's like trouble. Trouble, 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 trouble. So yeah, good team, don't it? Yeah, man, big side, man. Big side, a big side, you know, at the end of the day. Big side, a big side, so. so. so that's something for us to bear in mind, you know? You can't, you can't stray from it, you know? <sighs> what is been been done to prepare our teams mentally for games? Well, Coach Marin Gordon said recently. They brought on board a, a motivational speaker. So he says this is in the embryonic stage. So this is something that is just, just starting to happen. Who is that player? Simon, why are you doing is like that? <laughs> well, You'll find out tomorrow. You'll find out tomorrow. You'll find out tomorrow. Imagine reggae boys win Gold Cup and play in Confederations Cup against Spain, Brazil, and company in 2025. That would be something, Trent. Well, Brazil never win Copa. Argentina won the last Copa. And Italy won the Euros, so yeah. If that player gets his passport, which winger would he would you bench? Hmm. He would come on for 30 minutes. <laughs> How can we hustle off the national program like well like these guys? What? How much Hogan doesn't understand Jamaican culture compared to Samoa's? Well, you know, Samoyes was here for six years, 94 to 2000. And then after that, you know, he was here 2008 for six months, so seven months. So Coach Algrimson is on the island for not even two months. So it's going to take time. It's going to take time. And, you know, Samoyes was extremely immersed in the culture, you know, and 
He spoke with corporate Jamaica. He sent his children to school on the island as well and made it his home. We seem to wilt in the final five minutes of game seven. Right. The under-17 team, <clears throat> tiredness, losing the second balls. Those are big, 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 big things and something to work upon as well. The senior team, you know, the genius of Messi against Argentina, the Cameroon game. Uh, one lapse, one lapse in concentration, I'm telling you. The one, 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 dege, dege lapse in concentration. Oh, boy, man, so there. Ciao, ciao. But, press forward. That's what can bear in mind. So, yeah. Let's see what it's saying. Is a semi final still in the absolute minimum on this group? For me, yes. Yes. <clears throat> Jamaica should not go into this Gold Cup. And get anything less than a semi final appearance. I'm out here cheering for Philadelphia Eagles men running around with the ball in their hand. Calling football out love for the young boys to do well of Jamaica. Big up, big up, Star Boys. Star Boys, what's up, me? What's up, me? What's up, me? Oh, sorry. I'm speaking victory into being. Good thing, Mr. Campbell. Should our head coach dictate to the lower level style of play and be more involved in team selection? No. No, he can give advice, but to tell what to, should be done at grassroots level, no, but he can certainly give advice to those to, to those because he has been in positions where he has worked with youth, but to dictate, no, but he can certainly give Maron Gordon advice. Simon is the player from Merseyside, no. No. He's a London lad though, isn't it? Born in London. Do you know what I mean? Because when you're in London, talk a bit less than this though, you know what I mean, fun? Yeah, because when you're in London, what you find is that the way that they talk in London is a bit mixed, you know, fun, because the way that they talk is like a mixture of Jamaican and, and Patuan team, you see me? So when you're in London, you see me, fam. You understand? What's the chance Haiti returns to Copa America? Well, they have to do well in the next edition of the Nations League. That's what they have to do, Trent Boring. Do well in the next edition of the Nations League, and then we can have a conversation about that matter. But until then, sorry. Sorry, I don't see it happening. So, that's what I'll say for right now. Just don't see it happening. We'll discuss in a video tomorrow, sir. Tomorrow we'll get all the details that you need. For now, what I can say is Manchester United is the academy is looking at Cuba Mitchell right now. They have sent scouts to go up to the northeast to watch him play. So Manchester United are looking at Cuba Mitchell. And that's the latest at this point in time in relation to that matter. So that, that's, that's what we can say right, right now. Mm-hmm. Well, Guadalupe be able to participate in Copa America if they qualify. They wouldn't have have been able to play in 2019. Thing is, Copa America. Yeah, I know Copa America. That's if they're one of the top six in the Nations League. If they're one of the top six in the Nations League, then yes, they can play because Copa America is a regional tournament. But they can't play in a World Cup or a Confederations Cup or Under 17 World Cup or Under 20 World Cup. So, so yeah, that's the reality. That's all we can say, folks. So, Reggae Boys fans, if you haven't already, smash the like button. And after you do that, 
hit the subscribe button. We're very, very close. Very, very close to 16,000 subscribers. So quite simple, folks. Smash the like button. And after you smash the like button, hit the subscribe button to ring your boy's commentary. All right? So that's what I want you guys to, to be, be mindful of. So... So yeah. So, <clears throat> but don't you think if we have the same style at lower level, we'll feel it? Yes, of course. This is what Belgium did. This is what Iceland did. So yeah. So of course it would help. But to tell Maren Gordon from High Mile Gumson, pick him or pick there. And remember, Coach Hulkinson has just come in. For him to look at domestic-based players and then dip into the under-17 and then plan for friendlies against Trinidad and Tobago for the senior team in March and Gold Cup and Nations League. It's a lot on his plate right now. His focus is a senior team, and that's where his focus should be right, right now. All right, folks, take care. More to come. Big news to come tomorrow. All right, guys, smash the like button. And subscribe to Reggae Boys Commentary right now. This video is brought to you by MPEC Printery, specializing in t shirt printing, posters, and shipping from the USA. Call 876 775 6692 or 876 337 7374. Andy Gone Nuts, 100% guaranteed fresh coconut water delivered straight to your door. Call 876-309-6128. That's 876-309-6128. Refreshing and affordable. For more information, follow them on Instagram at Andy Gone Nuts. Hmm. Truly refreshing. And Crumble by Mrs. C. Old English fudge and other delectable sweet treats. Call or WhatsApp 876-586-0471. That's 876-586-0471. This video is also brought to you by BLC Jamaica Security Electronics. Specializing in alarm system, video surveillance, camera system or CCTV, barrier system, gate automation, and access control. Call 876-320-7711. That's 876-320-7711. Or 876-351-1105. That's 